uh, the fourth edition of the Youth Forum organized by Real Star Leaders Club. Real Star Leaders Club is a youth-oriented group you know, that is motivated you know, to change the orientation of, of, of youths. You will come to understand that um, youth these days, they are, they are fast driven as it were. They are fast driven and just like the team of this um, edition says that uh, take a stand. A lot of youths have the tendency to compromise because of the society they have, um, they have found themselves in. It's quite unfortunate. So Real Star is saddled with the responsibility of changing the mindset of changing the mindset of youth, making them to see the society as God will have them see it. And basically, I must just be honest with you, it all starts with the knowledge of, you know, God's saving grace. It starts with it because except, you know, you, do, you have that knowledge, except to come to the knowledge of who God actually is and what he has empowered you to be, you, you realize that uh, it's easier said than done. It's a, it's a program for young leaders um, to help build capacity in them, to help um, train them what the future holds and um, the responsibilities that is attached to what the future holds. It's more like a developmental program wherein young people are, are taught what it takes to live a good life, um, to be worthy ambassadors of their families, their nation and and um, be able to change the environment. Basically that's all we're here to do. It's a program be by different pastors to impart a useful society and to educate and consign their future and the area of your calling and to discover the issues to catch the young, to develop their, their area of talent, their, their career, and to fix them the way that will be useful in the society. That's why we are here. We are arranging this program to, to build a youth of tomorrow because they say that the youth are the, they are the strength of every society. So that's why we are investing. We have to build human capacity or instead of building cathedral capacity. So that's why we are here today. This is an event that should always be organized for youth. Because we have a lot of youth out there who don't even have a direction for their lives. They don't know what they are supposed to be doing with their lives. And for those who know what they should be doing, they are under pressure. Well, they are neither here nor there. So I think this program would really help people navigate and focus with a better direction for their lives. If you're not in, you come in. If you're in, you find your place. It's, it's, it's a good one. Uh, my friend, uh, Mr. Barry, has been doing this you know, over the years, since 2009, or thereabout that we, that we met. It's a good way you know, to give hope to, to our people and let them know that even though some of the older leaders in court have failed us, we shouldn't fail ourselves. So I think that's one of the reasons you know, for this uh, conference and I think it's 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 most uh, you know welcome especially at a time you know like this where you know most of our leaders have actually failed us in providing direction you know and leadership for us you know in this country. Christian Leaders Club is an organization driven with passion to raise a new generation of leaders that will not compromise integrity and the fear of God in discharging their duty in all set up and having understood that uh, in all set up there is crisis around there is corruption everywhere and we are looking for a generation that can naturally come and clean up the mess. And the vision of Rista is to do that. So this is the fourth edition of our annual Youth Leadership Forum. And then this fourth edition, we, like you said, we, is the, the topic we are looking at is taking a stand. Now, when we say take a stand, we are trying to tell the teenagers and the youth to take a stand in their leadership position, in their self-management, let them take a stand in politics, let them take, take a stand in governance of the nation. Let them take a stand in governance of the nation. Let them take a stand in the, in, in, in the secular world, in business, in career, in entertainment. Let them defend, let there be a standard and ethics, promotion of ethics in this uh, various setup. That is why, you see, like I said, one goal is to ensure that we raise leaders that will discharge their duty in all setup with high moral standard, with integrity. Father, we thank you. King of glory, we thank you. Ancients of days, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We ask that you open our ears, O oh God. Lord, open our ears and give us understanding. The revelation we teach you now today, so that we will not, O oh God, miss out of it. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lead your friends. 
and talk to him. Lift up your voice and talk to him. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Last day, I need to talk to the Lord. One thing. There is a purpose why you are here. Bible says, before the foundation of the earth, the Lord knows. He says in Jeremiah, 29, 11, for I know the thought I have towards you. It's not a thought of me. It's not a thought of crying. It's not a thought of weeping. But to give you a future and a hope. A lot of us here in my thinking, how is my tomorrow's going to be? Fact, when you look at the family background, when you look at the state, you look at the nation, you look at everything, see and beauty. But I want to thank the Lord. Lord, because you allow me here, open my eyes of understanding. Let my eyes of understanding concern my future be life. Lift up your voice and go talk to the Lord. Let my eyes of understanding concern me my future. Lord, let me be enlightened. Let me be enlightened. Let me be enlightened. It doesn't matter how long a man has traveled on a wrong path. What matters in life is the day you discover where you are going to. The day you discover where you are going to. The purpose why God creates you. The reason you are made to serve in your generation. The entire generation will be made groaning. They will be made in pain. They will be made in pain. Because of the experience today in our great nation, in the course of people at this their eight time, they refuse to understand why they are created. And they neglect it. They have no understanding of the future. That is why the entire nation, our nation, is under siege today. But your generation will not be under siege. And the other reason why your generation will not be under siege is your understanding of the purpose of the future God has for you. Read study that score. Most of you, when you got the invitation, you must have been asking. What kind of organization is it? Church? A lot of people say a church or a social club or a night club. No. Restart that club is a leadership oriented group driven with passion to raise a new generation of leaders who are God fearing, that will not compromise integrity and the fear of God in discharging their duty in all sectors. As you and I know, that every sector in our nation are crying for help. There are crises in all sectors. And God in his wisdom has raised this organization to raise men and women and develop their leadership capacity to take their place in all sectors, which you are privileged to come in contact with this morning. Our vision is to raise leaders for posterity. When you have posterity, we are raising you and we are raising the race so that we can provide a good leadership so that we will not suffer or our children will not suffer the kind of leadership we are suffering in this generation. Every day in the front and the Headlines and of newspaper and television radio, all you can hear is stealing of money, corrupt practices, immorality, wickedness. Why? Because a generation we are left on mental. So the purpose why you are here is to be taught or to learn something that will help you to pioneer. Your tomorrow. Recently, there's a lot of series of meetings they hold annually. They hold what we call professional leadership forum. That's specifically for men and women who are in the profession in industry, like the lawyers, the medical doctors, the accountants, every profession they meet so that they understand why God has placed them in that industry. 
We have a youth leadership forum where the youths are being inspired, motivated, and challenged to defend the gospel, the faith they have received. We have parent forum where our parents come together also. And we also have what called school leadership forum where you see we the 12 go to schools from one school to another teaching leadership ethics character development self-management and a temporal mindset so we have what we call leadership view that runs monthly where you have opportunity to interact with people in the choosing discipline ahead of you those who want to be lawyers, those who want to be mental doctors, they have opportunity to interact. They will have, in that leadership view, you have opportunity to have different classes, sessions. Not as a whole, but we have sessions where each group are been having a soft a speaker who tell them who they can interact with. And they can even choose somebody that will become their mentor. Remember, speaker says, when there is no counsel, there is no safety. In the multitude of counsel, there is no safety. So, any discipline you want to choose, there is always opportunity for you to meet people in that area. So, these are the program recently that not goes annually. Recently that one is not a church. And it's not planning to become a church, and it will never be what a church. But it's an organization driven with passion to raise a new generation of leaders. And our members are drawn from men and women who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. Most of us have the opportunity to This morning, in 35 minutes, we will look at the Every time you want to take a stand, I'm not here to tell your neighbor, take a stand. I'm not here to tell your neighbor again, take a stand. Now come to the second table, take a stand. If you are renting a house, if your parents, some of you live in rental apartments, you don't say because the landlord is a Muslim, I'm not going to get the house. And you're not going to get to the market and say, oh, this perfect is because the Muslim said you're not going to buy it. So, in that respect, we still play in a secular society. So, we must learn how to take our stand, even within the plurality of the environment that we are in. But now, standards have come down that even in our churches, they still force a church. I will say that. Bodies have been eroded. We are in a time where what is wrong has become right, and what is right has become wrong. I remember the day I celebrated my 21st birthday many, 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 many years ago. I remember a young lady who was my age when came to me. And the first thing she asked me was that how many ladies have you slept with? And I said, sure. I said, so you're a lawyer as well. I said, yes. And the way she looked at me was as though something was wrong with me. You know, those are the things we are in. That as a young boy, you are not drinking. And the young boy that was spoken, they feel that something is wrong with you. Why? That is the very thing. And the young boy, if they are not sadly, there is a problem with you. As a young girl, if there are some things that are not doing, there is a problem with you. And so sometimes you tell to ask yourself, so, am I really okay? Is there a problem with me at all? Why? What is wrong has become right, and what is right has become wrong. You know the pressures you face as a young teenager, as a young man, as a young lady, when you want to meet with your friends, and because they are not doing what they are doing, you are ostracized. So you are under pressure to do what they are doing, to be accepted. These are things that people are ashamed of doing before. But now, it's an open thing that people do anyhow. So they are trying to find what is wrong has become right, and what is right has become wrong. People come out of me and tell you I'm a gay. And if you try to talk against it, the next thing you get is that you are going against my fundamental human rights. So we 
they are hiding under the human rights to perpetrate what is evil. Let the now in the US, you know, for, it, um, for those who are very mature, the new one, you know, you know, you know, that immediately a child is born. I will say that. If a child is born, you can know whether it's a male or female, yes or no. Now, when a child is born, you feel a form which is called a blood certificate. It means the gender of the child is teeth. If it's a male, what do you think? What do you think? If it's a female, what do you think? For now in America, when a child is born, you do not assign a gender to that child anymore. Right? They tell that when the child grows up, he will determine his own gender. So we have what we call transgender. So I can wake up now and say, I don't feel like a male. I feel I am a female. And so I go to the hospital and then they give me rest. And then I do my hair, I check my face, and they do rest and I'm lost. All of a sudden, a 50 year old man says, I don't feel like a woman, I feel like a man. So those are the things that we are in now. That's what they tell you that you don't know your gender until you, until it's what you feel. Look at the times that we are in. We are in some way, evil is celebrated and it's has something we wanted. So, for example, we are told that around this place, around this Nadulu, a major kidnapper was caught yesterday, living in the big mansion. And I'm very sure he must have been given one or two different titles. Why? He's rich. We do not question the source of some of this wealth as long well as he's rich. Even our churches will give them six and four. They are the chairman of our concerts. They are the chairman of our committees in the church. We give them this that two thousand five hundred and our committees. Why? They drive a big car. That is the kind of society that we are in. That we do not question the source of wealth of people. It all started in 2006. I was coming from Ota, getting to Aran Ijaye. I saw the two sides of the road were blocked. And uh, coming from church, I was crying inside. And uh, after I spent like three hours on the traffic, and I turned and asked God, I said, Lord, what is happening? Why nobody is want to give way? He said, I have no man. I have no mind leadership. I said, no, Lord, you can't say so. There is this, there is, I begin to call names of people around in the nation. I say, no, every man are doing their own thing. I need a man in the authority. So, in that, it's begin to speak to my heart what to do and how it will be done. And though I dropped it for several years, but I just picked it up four years back. And God has been helping us. And uh, what inspired is you see misconduct in every sector, you see corrupt practices in every sector. You see all social vice, immorality in all sector. There is no sector that is free. Both religious sector, political sector, economic sector, financial sector, medical sector, legal sector, judiciary, they are corrupt. And how can we get this? And this is not the vision, the will of God concerning man. So God expects that his standard will be established. So this is what inspires me is because the suffering of the people traceable to the bad leadership of our generation.